Come over and we start a fight Never know who's wrong or right Feel nothing when you go I know it's not intelligent Drinking for the hell of it But that's irrelevant now We should talk about with us How come we're holding on Cause really I don't see the benefits now And you've broken my trust So I just wonder Why do I fall back to you? Really nothing I can do about it Why do I fall back to you? It's like you're a drug to me I can't quit It's not like we're still 22 Trying something new just to pass time I don't think that we ever could work this out None of it makes sense There's no reason why Why I still fall back to you? Hey folks, welcome back to the live stream. This is Tweet FEV. I am Dan, and uh, we're going to talk about some quad stuff today. As always, thank you all for coming today. I, uh, I greatly appreciate it. This is basically the highlight of my <laughs> my entire week is being able to talk to you guys and uh, you know interact in real time, if you know what I mean. Welcome to the live stream, Rick Zapata, first one on the the, the old chatteroony thing there. Rick Zapata, a uh, great contributor to my Discord. If uh, if you are interested in uh, my Discord server, where I have a lot of really uh, really cool people over there that are pretty knowledgeable and uh, you know help you uh, with your purchasing decisions, troubleshooting, and uh, just general you know just shooting the poop over there. You know what I mean? Uh, go to tweetfev.com. Put a video or a link in the description there and uh, click that discord link and that, that'll get you into the server and from there uh, that's the best way to do troubleshooting if you are in need of any sort of help that's the best way to do it uh rick Zepeda, eric allen as always uh eric allen one of the uh one of the the local ish guys i got to meet him a couple weeks ago at a delta five race says he's got two race rigs up and flying which is awesome uh looking forward to racing with you uh, on the 10th, uh, Delta 5, we do multi-GP races every second Saturday of the month. This stream is powered by coffee, as usual. Uh, and I want to give a big shout out to my friends over at Ruby Moon Coffee. They are my provider of the caffeine I need in my life. If you're interested in some uh, small batch, freshly roasted coffee, head over to Ruby Moon Coffee. Uh, I work with the guy. Um, great coffee, really good coffee. And, uh, you know, I, I see him sell a bag to somebody at work and, uh, you know, they, they walk across the building. I can smell it from long ways away and it's just, it's just so good. 
So, so good. Ricardo, hello from uh, Lisbon. I don't know where that is. It's darts coming at us from the Dirty D. Hopefully things are starting to warm up where you're at. Um, I know my parents said it's starting to warm up a little bit, but you know, warm to them is different to me for sure. Dustin Gabble, welcome to the live stream. Sun Bunny, that's a new name. Welcome. Glad to see you here. Um, another change to the stream. You notice that XLR port that was vacant last time now has a big old fat analog cable coming out of it. And I managed to get my hands on a Go XLR Mini. I overpaid for it. That's unfortunate. But uh, messing with the audio again with the live stream. So if you guys have any suggestions, uh, too loud, too quiet weird background noises, let me know. Um, I can't always hear what you guys are hearing. Uh, all right, let's get some, uh, let's get some tunes going. There we go. If that's too loud or too quiet, let me know. I can certainly change that. Yeah, uh, it starts a glitchy screen. Reminds me of analog FEV after spending a day in DJI goggles. Yes, yes, it does. Uh, that, that's kind of why I went with it. It kind of reminded me of analog. It, I don't know. It's kind of a cool theme. William McEwen, welcome, my friend. Uh, Nazem, welcome. Polly FEV, how you doing, man? Welcome to the live stream. Brandon Bentley, another awesome contributor over on my uh, my my Discord, one of my Discordians, <laughs> uh, helping out people late at night when I'm trying to get some sleep to get to uh, work in the morning. Uh, Brandon Bentley is he's always there helping out. Dustin Gable says the audio is crisp and clean, perfect, awesome man. Um, Dealing with a lot of new stuff as far as audio goes with like uh, EQs and gates and compressors and all that stuff. Um, it's audio, it, I mean, if, for, for you guys that are trying to get into any sort of production or live streaming, I'd say the number one important thing other than, you know, having something someone wants to watch is your audio. Think about it, how many times you watch a video or put up a video on YouTube and you don't really watch it, but you're listening the whole time. Audio is so important. If I if I click on a YouTube video and the content isn't super engaging and the audio is crap, I will most likely leave. Um, or I, I mean, and if the if the content's really good, I'll I'll bear through it. But the whole time I'm thinking, man, this this audio is terrible. Yeah. Eric Allen asks uh, Nazem, how's the weather in Turkey? I'd love to come see your country someday. Yeah, I would like to I'd like to travel abroad. Uh, the most I've ever done was to uh, Canada and uh, Cuba. <clears throat> Brandon Bentley says, I also put in hours over at the Emu Flight Discord in the uh, tuning channel. What's tuning? Oh, man. No, I've actually started tuning a lot of my quads. Um, I'm working on a 5-inch uh giveaway kind of pre-built kit. Uh, I, I'm building the first one to get the tune just dialed in and make sure the components are right. And that'll be going up next month. How's the background music? Is it uh, too loud, too quiet? Can you even hear it? <clears throat> Polly FV asks, anyone get the Flywoo email about them sending the wrong direction antennas? You can get a free replacement between that and them sending bricked F7 mini flight controllers. Wow, man, I have not seen that. Uh, that's a big mistake by Flywoo, but if they're actually sending out emails to correct it, that's, I mean, it sucks that you're in that position to start with, but it's cool that they're actually like um, going to try to take care of you. That's, that's cool. I have a cough button now, so I can mute the stream as I'm talking. And I've also got one of these. So, I don't know. I don't know if it's gimmicky or if I'll ever actually use it, but it's kind of neat that it's there. 
Yeah, there, there's so many Discord forums I'm part of that, and I can't, uh, uh, it, it, it's hard to, to break up my time between all of them. <laughs> yeah, well, what's tuning? Dustin Gallo says, I agree that 90% uh, of the stream quality is uh, command presence. Yeah, yeah. Eric Allen says, I can hear it softly. Uh, let's bump it up another, another click here. All right. Let me know. Appropriately quiet. Uh, yeah, swear bleep button. Yeah, just in case. I mean, it's like, to use that, you have to like, like preemptively know you're going to swear and then hit it rather than doing it in post. I don't know. It's, it's, it's weird. An uncensorship video. What's an uncensorship video? All right. So now that everybody's kind of rolling in here, um, some housekeeping stuff. Uh, I have a website, tweetfv.com, if you want to find out everything uh, tweetfv related. Also in there, really important, is my Discord server. If you want to get on my Discord server, head on over there. Uh, another big one is Patreon. All of these fine folks are contributors to my Patreon. Uh, everything that comes in on Patreon goes right back into the channel in the form of giveaways and uh, advice and testing, uh, but mostly giveaways. Uh, also in there is my affiliate links. If you're interested in one of these these awesome little cameras, the uh, Insta360 GO 2, highly recommend it. I've been filming with this thing for the last uh, week. Took it to the beach yesterday with my daughter. I had a, had a blast with it. Uh, I put it on her. If you haven't seen my short uh, on YouTube, check that out. Uh, it was kind of fun. Uh, quick little edit I did on my phone using Adobe Rush. Not a bad little program. I mean, it's it's super lacking compared to Adobe Premiere, but uh, it made it quick and easy to make a video. Uh, also on there is, um, well, the affiliate links for all the other vendors that I'm affiliated with. Uh, got some new, uh, got some new Patreon members this uh, this month. Uh, here we go. I'm going to try to butcher some names. Uh, Robbie Store. Sure, that's wrong. Ivan uh, Sinkovich, sure that's wrong as well. Uh, William McEwen, definitely think I got that one right. And also one Joshua Bardwell, welcome to the Patreon. Uh, greatly appreciate it, I love the support. Um, back over to the uh, the live stream here. Yeah, Brandon Bailey, like if you got a plan a swear word that takes all the fun out of it. Yeah, swearing is a, is a part of my speech pattern. Look up and Jimmy Kimmel on censorship. All right. I'll look that up after the live stream. <laughs> Not a few related, but hilarious. Yeah. Uh, I like Jimmy Kimmel, uh, especially back when he was on the band show with uh, Adam Carolla. Uh, so. I don't listen to music in the car really anymore. I listen to podcasts, and the one podcast I listen to all the time is the Adam Carolla Show. Uh, it, it's very LA based. Like they, they talk about a lot of local stuff, which is you know it's bad pod, but um, I, it, he's hilarious. And the the people he has on there for interviews are you know luminaries. They're you know uh, big time people, and uh, he also has a like an inspirational podcast, which is. Uh, really, really good. Um, if you guys are looking for something to listen to that's got a comedic flair to it, uh, definitely check out the Adam Carolla show. <laughs> Adam, Adam uh, Brandon Bentley. Yeah, I saw the bounce of here footage. Private Island FPV, welcome, man. How you doing? <laughs> Rob Logan, welcome back. Uh, man, how's that, uh, how's that one wheel uh, streak going, man? Don't forget to put my name on the wheels. Yep, I will make sure I don't do that again. <laughs> <laughs> the man show. Yeah. Yeah, Adam Carolla, he's, uh, you know, he's he's self-made, you know. He, uh, um, a lot of struggles and trials and tribulations in his life. and uh, He has some f 
incredible documentaries out on uh, his his uh, channel Chassis. Um, I think you can also find him on Pluto. He's done uh, he's done uh, documentaries on the first uh, African American NASCAR driver called um, Uppity. Awesome, awesome documentary. If you're interested in uh, auto even if you're not interested in automotive racing, check that out. Uh, 24 Hour War, which came out before Ford beat Ferrari. Uh, I think it's actually better. It's a really good documentary. Um, he's also working on a few more, but it's it's pretty good, man. D uh, definitely check out uh, the stuff he's working on. Uh, also, if you want to uh, get my attention in the, the chat, type at TweetFV. It'll highlight it in uh, yellow, and uh, I'll hopefully be able to see it a little bit easier. Uh, the chat goes by pretty quick, so sometimes I miss things. Uh, no, uh, Rob Logan, I didn't miss you. Welcome to the live stream. And I will make sure I put you on the wheel, because we are going to do a Super Chat giveaway. I'm going to save that for later. Uh, also, if, uh, if you have a question you want... To get answered, look at the bottom of that chat window. There should be a uh, dollar sign. Hit that for the super chat, and I will make sure I get to your question. And if you have like a really in-depth question, again, go over to that Discord. Oh yeah, that's right, the Paul Newman racing one. That one was really, really good. Like really good. And he owns, I think like five or six Paul Newman race cars. Brandon Bentley, two DSMX receivers busted. And the last one, the IPX connector busted off the pad. Um, have you ever tried direct soldering the antennas to your receivers? Um, I've done quite a few of them, uh, but you know that's like me just being cheap and I don't want to throw them away or get new ones. Had to break the one wheel streak, had 30 days. They are test positive, so they uh, shipped us to a hotel to quarantine for the 10. Oh man, that's, that sucks, man. Sorry to hear that. Uh, Ride it around the hospital. No, just kidding. Oh uh, man, that's that's a bummer. Hopefully you guys are doing better. Hopefully everybody out there is staying safe and uh, not being affected by craziness that is in this uh, this world right now. So I'm trying to do the YouTube shorts. Uh, like I said, I put one out yesterday of uh, a test of the uh, the pendant thing here for the Insta360 Go 2. I know in the live stream the other day I showed it connecting to the pendant. Turns out that was the wrong side of the pendant. Um, that is incorrect. The big flat side that had the sticker on it, that's the side. And this thing is on there like glue. It is pretty hard to remove. If you guys haven't seen that uh, after the live stream, go ahead and check that out. It's uh, it's pretty cool. I don't know if it actually makes it to the or how it gets to the uh, the shorts um, shelf on mobile, but we'll see what happens. Uh, it's only been up for a couple hours, so I'll check the analytics on it later and see what's going on. And uh, I, you know, I've been using the Insta360 Go a lot. Uh, I went to the beach with my daughter yesterday. I uh, got a bunch of filming uh, at the beach. Uh, by the way, this case really kind of sucks in the sand. Um, one of the issues I ran into is sand gets kind of packed inside of these two little holes here, and then the little uh, the little tripod stand doesn't want to, you know, sit down in there. Plus, sand gets inside the, uh, the USB-C port and the quarter twenty. Actually, <laughs> there's still some sand in there, but um, nothing you can't just tap out later on. So a lot of filming there. Uh, the, the image quality that comes out of this camera is very impressive. Like uh, I took a video of just right, driving across a bridge and it was really hazy. But when I exported the video to my computer, like you could see the blue in the sky and the little wispy clouds. I could barely see that myself. It's really, really neat. <laughs> Brand Valley, nice use of the button there. Yeah, it didn't feel natural. I can tell you that. <laughs> oh, it's the the one built into the board. Yeah, that that's pretty tight place to solder. Uh, Nazem. By the way, how do we enter the giveaway? Well, this is one of those scavenger hunt ones. You got to figure it out yourself. 
Rob Logan, yeah, she's doing fine. Only minor symptoms for a couple days. Little kids are resilient. Yeah, this uh, this thing doesn't really affect them nearly as bad as it does uh, older folks. <laughs> it starts. I wish I could turn off turn shorts off. I think I turned it off on my phone uh, because I don't see the shelf anymore. I don't remember how I did that, but it's not there. They aren't going to compete with TikTok. Nope, they probably aren't. But um, you know, YouTube needs to keep keep innovating. There's a lot of things that really suck about YouTube, um, like uh, well, a little bit inside baseball, like doing traditional uploads pays shit. Like it pays peanuts. It, it's a couple cents uh, of you know a day for the video. Uh, the live streams are kind of like you know like Twitch. You can make a lot of money on Twitch but you're live streaming all the time. Same thing with YouTube. Like this is the only platform they have where you can actually generate any sort of meaningful income right now. Um, the, the Google AdSense is garbage. That's why you see darn near every influencer has gone to outside revenue sources like Patreon, uh, affiliate links, and uh, live streaming. Uh, but it, you know, it was what, like four or five years ago, uh, just traditional uploads on YouTube, man, you could make bank with that stuff. And uh, that's, it's gone uh, for a couple of reasons. YouTube doesn't have any meaningful competition, so they don't have to pay you. If you want to get your content seen, this is where you're at. Dustin Gable, I do like the uh, YouTube shorts. Uh, it's like a teaser trailer. Yeah, you know, they're they're quick. Um, I'm liking the Bardwell ones. Uh, little quick quick tip videos. I think uh, it's it's a good filler throughout the week to keep uh, keep viewership up. For sure. Yeah, Insta 360 Go. See the world better than our own eyes. I don't know how, but um, it's it certainly did. Dustin Gale, yeah, <laughs> nothing like taking a shower in Iraq. As soon as you walk out, you, you get hit with a sandstorm. Sands and everything, no matter where it's at. Yep. You know, I take the daughter to the beach. I'm like, all right, try to. You know, just try to stay clean. And I know damn well what's going to happen. By the time we're done, she's covered head to toe in wet sand. And then she's trying to put her shoes on. She's like, I don't know how to do this. <laughs> uh, also, hate how short show in history. Uh, how just scrolling a video, if you slow down, it starts playing as a history. Oh, interesting. <laughs> Beefer Byron. You hear Trump is coming up with his own Facebook. Is this true? Uh, dude, I don't I don't watch the news. Do not watch the news. Honestly, the only bit of news I ever get is what I hear on the Adam Carolla show. So, eh. Life is better. Life is better if you don't listen to the news because news is all fear-based. At least this is my opinion. Sorry, disclaimer, my opinion. Uh, news is fear-based, and when they get you hooked, that's uh, when they get you afraid, that's how they get you hooked, and it'll be whatever they want to feed you. So, I don't listen. Uh, the JB Short about the... Oh, I didn't watch that one, but uh, I've been there for sure. Yeah, I'm more like a Twitter competitor is what YouTube needs to become. Um, there's, a, there's a lot of like live streaming influencers I watch on YouTube. I don't watch Twitch at all. Um, I, I don't... I just don't care. I don't have enough time to devote myself to all these different platforms. But um, Alpha Gaming and Epos Vox are the two big ones that I, I pay attention to. Um, they uh, they have a lot of really good information on like growing a channel. If you're looking to get into live streaming, setting up equipment, what you should purchase, those guys are a wealth of information. I know this isn't FPV related, but uh, it, it kind of can sort of be. Um, cheap gear to start up with uh, and then high value gear as well. Adam Kroll was great on the man show. Yeah, man. Uh, I, he went and testified in front of Congress uh, a couple years ago uh, about patent trolls. If you don't know what patent trolls are, look it up. Uh, pretty screwed up shit that goes on. Yeah, that button's going to be completely useless to me. <laughs> uh, yeah, Mihail, uh ignorance is bliss. You are not kidding, man. Um, I just go through life living my best life, right? I don't really give too much of a you know what all right so a couple things we got a uh came in today 
Uh, got one of these, the uh, FPV crate sub 250 crate for the month of uh, March. Again, FPV crate, I love what they're doing. Uh, I have affiliate link down there. If you're interested in getting yourself one of these, head over to tweetfv.com and uh, click that link and that'll give me a little bit of kickback. Uh, again, I uh, apparently I am the only person, the only person that orders more than one of these at a time and uh, typically they screw up and only send me one and I gotta hit that customer service link and get them to send the second one. So what I do is I get one or I get two, I would have two here, uh, one for me and one for you. Uh, I eventually give this one away and then <laughs> I'll be honest, that one that's for me will end up being for you as well. This is the the complete build from the last round of FPV crates. Uh, still kind of messing with it, just haven't had a, a chance to uh, put it up for uh, for grabs over on Patreon. And uh, this will be coming. This thing's awesome. Uh, it's definitely under 250. It's like it's like right at 250. I did break an arm on it. Uh, thank you very much to Siati FPV. If you're not a uh, subscriber to him he does live streaming like every day that he's one of the few in this industry that has made uh youtube and live streaming and fpv his uh his full-time job live streams every day uh for patreons if you don't see it on uh the the youtube thingy uh, but he he sent me two of his arms because i've busted one and i haven't been able to find replacements so awesome on him again uh aaron ciati uh, ciati fpv uh he's also kind of uh, we, we've been helping each other out a lot throughout our little journey on YouTube. Um, I started sponsoring uh, giveaways over on his channel. Uh, he gives away a set of my grips like every what fourth Monday or something like that. He does a, a live stream giveaway type thing. Private Island just received my first 12 18650s thanks to your uh, video. 35 amp should do just fine. Well, what are you putting in Private Island? Are you doing the uh, the the micro long range thing? We're I don't know where mine went, but uh, yeah, uh, we'll be, I'll be opening this up uh, probably after the stream to make a video uh, and I'll be giving one of these away next month. That's for sure. Um, another thing is I got this. This is going to be my new race frame. This is the Leventador. Uh, it's created by uh, the guys over at Quad Rivals, which I know it looks awful lot like this. This is the Pyrocube. And there's a reason why uh, the Pyrocube was originally a frame designed by these guys. I think they called it, um, nah, I don't remember what they called it. It was a different uh, internal name and then they sold the design to uh, uh, Pyrodrone and they made the Pyrocube. This is kind of the same thing. The wheelbase is a little bit smaller, not a lot, and it's 20 by 20 only and it's uh, a fair whack lighter than the uh, Pyrocube. So I'm gonna gut the, um, the uh, Flight 1 uh, H7 build and dump it inside this frame and try to make that my uh, my new main race rig. Um, pretty cool little frame. Pretty cool frame. I wish I'd have bought a, a second one, to be honest. <laughs> and today, the Patreon giveaway... Oop, I didn't mean to say that. The, uh, the giveaway is going to be for... Uh, this little guy, this is the Beta FEV uh, 65X. So it's got one of the HD recording boards in there. It's 2S, runs the BT 2.0, Crossfire. Uh, pretty cool little quad. Uh, I never really got this flying extremely well, but uh, then again, I haven't tried tuning it in maybe oh, almost a year now. So this will be what we're one of the things we're giving away today. And then for the uh, Patreon Super Chat giveaway, We're doing these. These are the uh, Racer Star uh, 2207 1888 KV motors. We're giving away a set of these uh, for the Super Chat giveaway. But we'll uh, we'll talk more about that in a little bit here. Also, something really interesting, or it really surprised me. I, I got a package delivered and it had a, a Beta FPV bubble wrap around him like I didn't order anything from uh, beta FPV um, so open it up and in the in the bubble wrap was 
this guy here. This is the Beta FB VR02 goggles. Uh, contacted them just to make sure that like this was supposed to come to me, right? And they're like, yeah, yeah, it was. We just forgot to email you. Uh, so I got a set of these for review. I've been kind of goofing around with these, and uh, this is one heck of a set of goggles. I I really wish stuff like this existed when I first got into the hobby because this is really nice. It's probably one of the clear screens on the uh, on a box set of goggles I have ever seen. Notice. No antennas though, so I'm curious how the range is gonna be. I uh, definitely plan on popping these suckers open and taking a look. Uh, USB-C charging, built-in battery, the channel uh, frequency selector is really super intuitive, and the screen quality is really, really nice. And they're, these things are really small, uh, but the screen's pretty big. They're using, uh, I haven't really, I've seen it on a few different goggles, but the screen is actually mounted up here in the top and it's, the display is going down and it's hitting a mirror and being reflected back to your, uh, your eyeballers there. Um, really nice set of goggles and they actually fit really nice. This is probably the best fitting set of box goggles I have ever used, but we'll see how the range goes. Um, and what kind of receivers and is it diversity? Is it non-diversity? Single, singular city? Is that a word? I know it's not a word, but um, kind of excited for these. Uh, I, I've always wanted to take a set of box goggles along with me for ride-alongs, but they're almost always way too big uh, to put in my bag. So wait for the video on that one. Kearns JW got my 18 face just waiting in my spot loader. What kind of spot loader did you uh, purchase? Uh, Nazem, do I need to be uh, your patron? No, nobody needs to be my patron. I would appreciate it if you were. That's how I keep this thing going, how I keep the lights purple on, on purple. Yeah. Um, uh, EDOC, uh, I like the way box frames fly in the sim, uh, but the locals here say the wind destroys their performance. Where traditional fl frames fly fine, I live uh, where the wind off the mountains is consistent. Uh, I have not noticed any issues with the wind on the box frame because it's really not that much more surface area. And look at all those guys running race frames. They're probably using front and rear uh, um, braces. So there's more surface area there. So all you have left is the sides. And um, I really don't notice a ton of... Uh, actually, I don't notice any getting pushed around in the wind any more than I did like my old floss threes. What I do notice is this is one of the most durable frames I have ever flown. And uh, in mid airs, this wins. Ask me how I know. Oh, uh, see Nazem, I wouldn't win anyways. LMAO, man, not with that attitude, you won't. Just kidding. Uh, I thought the Osa uh, is the box frame I looked at the most. Oh, so let's. So. Let's see what that sucker looks like. That's a nice looking box frame. So the, the difference, the thing I see the difference between that and like the Leventador is uh, they use a, a separate piece on top right here that's flat. That's uh, a frame stiffener because the uh, the carbon's the weakest in this direction here. So they put a piece uh, parallel, perpendicular, they make a T out of it, whatever, uh, across the top. And that takes a ton of force from the front impacts and you uh if you break this and you're gonna break this but if you break this and this you probably deserve to, to break a frame because that would be one hell of a hard hit uh carbon fiber is unbelievably strong in this direction but uh, that's an interesting looking frame looks uh, looks like a really tight tight build there Hopefully you guys aren't picking up too much of the uh, keyboard clicky clackety. Rob Logan, I want those box goggles. Uh, they're pretty darn nice, and I don't think they're very expensive either. Oh, 
What are they? Uh, yeah, 55 bucks. That's... Nope. Oh, jeez, never mind. 72? Really? That, that much? Oh, no, not from Banggood. <laughs> from, from Beta FEV, they're $50. By the way, if you are interested in set, you got an affiliate link to Beta FEV down in the video description or tweetfv.com. <sighs> Shameless plug. Gotta do it. Uh, yeah, 50 bucks from Beta FEV, that's not a bad deal. Everything I bought from, uh, by Beta FEV has sucked. Batteries, whoops, all crap. Uh, the Meteor 65, uh, in my experience, has been pretty good. The They make the best 65 millimeter frame uh, for dumping your mobula into. Um, batteries, yeah, I don't, I'm not a big fan of the uh, PH 2.0 batteries that come from Beta FEV, but there are a couple other ones from like, I think GMB makes them that are not bad. And then the, uh, you know, the, the beta light remote, that's, uh, the first one had a lot, a lot of, uh, quality control issues, but the new one seems to be doing a lot better. Does it have DVR? Uh, you know, that's a thing that's lacking from a lot of box goggles. Uh, nope, no DVR. Uh, yeah, that's right, Rixa Beta, the, uh, FXT Vipers were the ones I was thinking of, just couldn't. Think of the name. I knew the the, the Viper, but not the FXT. Um, I've had a few FXT products. The, uh, the first good DVR I had was uh, FXT. Just tuned in. Is a eighteen six fifty uh, spot welder needed? Considering the get the job done. Uh, if you watch my video on how to make a a eighteen six fifty pack, just drop a link to it here. There you go. I go over that subject uh, about spot welding versus soldering. Um, soldering's bad. Uh, you can do it and you'll be fine, but you gotta be very careful because heat and batteries are a bad combination. Uh, you gotta be really good at soldering. You gotta be quick and um, you, gotta, you gotta know what you're doing, basically. Uh, spot welding is the proper way to put together an 18650 pack. So I'm gonna say it's not 100% needed, but I'd say it's like 90% needed. That makes sense. But soldering can definitely get the job done, and I've done soldering for a long time on these packs. Picked up a K-Weld, ultra cheap, and uh, I've been using that since, and uh, that's definitely the way to go. Eric Allen, soldering can hit the cell. Spot welding gets it done in an instant. That's what I've been told. Yep, yep, that's exactly it. Except there are two mirrors in the FXT Viper. Huh, interesting. Yeah, this one doesn't have a focal distance adjustment, so hopefully it's good enough for your your eyes there. And uh, compared to like the the Ishin DM six hundred or six hundred DMs, whatever uh, those, I felt like I had a little bit of eye strain, but these I don't. Uh, it must be that mirror thing, hopefully. <laughs> your OCD says I need a comma. All right, let's. Uh, Let's let's fix that then. Oh yeah, because it, it circles back around, I gotcha. Uh, let's see. Oops. Pick trends and oh, there you go. That should be fixed the next time around. So anyways, let's uh, let's go ahead and get moving on this little guy. If, uh, if you've never seen one of these, this is a pretty nice little quad. Um, I did put Emu Flight on it back when Emu Flight was uh, kind of new and it didn't fly all that great, but I know things have changed a lot. And uh, a lot of a lot of my effort has been trying to reduce vibration in the FPV feed, and uh, these little foam pads really seem to help out a lot. Uh, this is a 65 millimeter whoop, uses 2S, uses the VT 2.0 connectors, and um, has crossfire built into it. The VTX I think is only 25 milliwatts, which is unfortunate. 
So hence the, the, the old snip in the back of the canopy to get the antenna sticking up a little bit more to try to help with reception. Um, so if you haven't gotten in on the giveaway for that, uh, recommend you try to find out where to go. Um, if you don't know where, I don't know, try to find it. Shouldn't be too hard to figure out where it's at. <laughs> Eric Allen debated saying anything. Oh, out of coffee. Darn it. So how's everybody doing out there? Uh, hopefully you guys got a chance to fly this week. Um, I am yeah, I got a few packs in. It's looking pretty nice out right now. Uh, unfortunately, after this, I'll be slaving over a hot laser cutter because I have two pretty large orders of uh, FPV grips to get out to some retailers. Also, um, if you're interested in a set of radio grips that I produce, uh, head over to Race Day Quads or Pyrodrone or uh, tweetfb.com and hit that Etsy link and uh, get yourself a set there. Um, if you're international, definitely go through Etsy because I only charge two US dollar dues to uh, to ship them anywhere in the world. Of course, it takes a while for you to get them, but that's, uh, that's the price you gotta pay. Quads with Mods, welcome man, how you doing? Welcome to the live stream. I think uh, last week I talked about this thing being dead. Uh, I think I figured out the issue. Um, so everything was coming up in the OSD, like a gray screen and everything was kind of like going off at a 45 degree angle. It was really weird. I assume the flight controller was dead. Turns out it was the camera. The camera got cooked uh, when I crashed into a large solid object. So uh, the, the flight one uh, eight, lightning H7, it's fine. Uh, this is going to get transplanted into the 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 the, 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 the Aventador. so I'm going to do that. Also, uh, last live stream I did the Speedy Cares package. Uh, mailed that off to the next person. Hopefully, you get it soon. Uh, I took a couple things out of there. Um, one of these, the uh, FEV Exchange button. I really like this. If you don't know what the FEV Exchange is, go to FEV, FPVExchange.com. It's like Craigslist meets eBay. Well, not eBay, well, kind of eBay and Facebook Marketplace, but it is just for FPV gear. Uh, it's it's an awesome idea. Uh, uh, Zenkis, uh, you see him on uh, YouTube and all the social medias. Uh, he's the one that runs it. He's deep into the, the whole FPV game. So uh, it's run by one of us for us. Uh, also uh, picked up one of these stickers from Maniac FPV. I meant to grab one of your other stickers that had like that retro 80s, 70s ish uh, theme with the black and white bars, but uh, oh, I forgot and uh, picked up a couple. Uh, picked up two of these, two uh, XM pluses for a couple builds I'm working on. So thank you, Speedy Turtle, for that. If you're interested in the Speedy Cares package, head over to Speedy FPVs uh, or Speedy Turtles Discord, Patreon. Oh man, I'm having a hard time with this. Head over to Speedy Turtles Patreon and uh, get yourself signed up. Uh, let's see, what did I throw it back in the box? I threw uh, one of these frames, I think, um, was it, I think it's It's Darts, uh, had me throw it in there. Maybe that's who it was, I can't remember. Uh, from a Super Chat giveaway that he won. Uh, I threw in one of these, the V-Fly uh, Smoke Stoppers. A couple T-Motor 5150 props, a whole bag of those things. Those are one of the most durable props I've ever used. And, um, What else did I toss in there? Oh, I can't remember. There's a few other things, but uh, that'll be coming to the next person. It starts. Fix a quad yesterday with new antenna problems, or with new antenna mounts. Drove 30 minutes to the park, plugged it in, got the magic smoke. Pinch wire between the FC and the DJ air unit. Oh, man. Hopefully you didn't kill that air unit. Uh, yeah, man. So something that was going on this week was all this drama with DJI. Everybody's saying, oh, they're not they're not making digital FPV for the FPV market anymore. That's just, that's not true, not entirely true. Uh, really what they're saying, at least what they're saying, their actions might be different. Uh, they're just not gonna produce the the air unit anymore. Um, the big The big guy that, honestly, if you looked at it, was never meant for us anyways. It was a, a half-baked idea 
to get the technology out there. There's no way to install it in a quad besides double-sided sticky tape. It wasn't meant for us. I think they're gonna stop producing that, which is fine. They've already had CADEX. Uh, they have the rights to the, uh, the Vistas, which is made for us. It actually has 20 by 20 M2 mounting. It's designed for FPV. So uh, I wouldn't worry too much. Uh, there is a microchip shortage in this in this world right now. So if you can find yourself some Vistas, I would pick them up while you can. Uh, hopefully something new comes out soon. We'll see what happens. But uh, I wouldn't worry too much about not getting your, uh, your DJI digital FPV on, you know what I mean? Uh, XM Plus, not all digital. Uh, XM Plus, no, I fly plenty of uh, plenty of analog, and really, um, all the receivers are analog, anyways. Uh, it starts by a spare quad, so it wasn't a total waste. Uh, Eric Allen, what uh, what are your two race quads that you have built up? I'm kind of curious, man. Uh, let's see, uh, Verity FPV, uh, I'm planning to get the Insta360 GO 2, do you rem recommend it for simple cinematic shots? I had the first go and it sucked, uh, no, it's it's actually pretty darn good. Um, I'm working on a video right now uh, comparing the Insta360 GO 1, the 2, and the uh, Hero Session 5, and um, the video quality is a little bit better out of this. The sensor size is the same between the two cameras, believe it or not, uh, or at least that's what um, the marketing says is the sensor and the sensor and this guy are the same size. Um, this has definitely a higher bit rate than this does. Um, and I don't know, it depends if you're, if you're talking cinematic, I'm assuming you're talking about uh, horizon leveling uh, using like um, real steady with something like this, whereas this, it's already there. It's not an extra purchase. It's baked right into the, right into the camera. Um, I do have a set of ND filters on the way for this. So uh, hopefully that'll kind of clean up that, like that real harsh um, graininess. Uh, you don't have the control over the camera that you do of this. Like you can't set the shutter speed like you can on the, uh, the, the GoPro. Um, oh wait, never mind. You can't set that anyways because GoPro took it out of the app. You have to download a third party app to be able to do all that stuff now. Thank you, GoPro. Um, plus, this is essentially not available. But if you're going to compare it to something like this, um, this is going to be better just because you have uh, more control uh, and better video on this guy than this. But it depends what you're flying. If you're trying to fly like a three inch or a, uh, a cinematic rig that you have to kind of fight with vibrations and the extra weight and the, and the fly time with something like this versus something like this, or if you're putting a full-size GoPro, not a decased one uh, on, then this might actually help you out because this thing weighs very little uh, compared to like an actual full case GoPro. This has no protection to it. It gets uh, splashed, hit, bumped, whatever, this thing's done. The, the back boards for these are extremely suspect and very unreliable, so you gotta be careful with these where this is fully encased. It's waterproof to, I think like 13 feet or something like that. Um, I don't know, it, it, you gotta weigh your options. Uh, I'm, I'm not saying that one is better than the other, but uh, there's a place for each of these in, uh, in someone's setup. But um, the video quality is far, far better out of this than the first version, at least in my opinion. Yeah, it's weird they're making the air unit just without the camera. Uh, yeah, it. I don't really see a need for the the full size camera anymore. Um, Cadex is making the 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 Vista Pro 2, what whatever the hell they call it, um, with the same image quality as far as I can tell, and uh, the same specs. And yeah, the air air unit doesn't record all that great, anyways. Um, but it's something. 
Yeah, I've got, uh, let's see, it starts as three air units and three vistas. Good for now. Yeah, I've got a couple vistas and I've got two air units. Um, the air units are basically useless to me because none of them will record to an SD card consistently because I don't know, there was a firmware update they did for, I think it was for the 50 megabit per second um, video. And now none of my SD cards will work in those vistas. So if, or the, the air units. So if I want to use that, I have to like roll the firmware back, back to the 25 megabit per second video stuff and it's just yeah no one no one wants that uh the session record at 4k like the run cam orange yeah, it does record at 4k but the bit rate is uh, a bit on the low side so it's not a really good 4k experience uh eric allen floss 3 and the cheap uh amazon fpv king brandon Belli just bought some grips finally uh, they're for the jumper T12, and it is a uh, slightly different mold, but I'll make it work. Jumper T12. Thought I made a set for the jumper T12. Maybe I didn't. Oh, that's T8SG. T12. Hmm. I thought the mold was the same between that and the uh, the, the T8. Oh, the back is slightly different. Oh, okay. Uh, Dustin Cavill, uh, what's your take on that race day quads versus FAA lawsuit? Um, I've read oh, 126 pages of it, considering the lawyer is also an FAA drop out. Um, I really haven't looked into it too much. I watched uh, like the Bardwell interview video with the with the lawyer. The lawyer seems like a total douchebag, um, which. It's probably good for him, I guess. I don't know. Um, I don't know. I think they've got they've got some stuff, but I don't think they have enough to make any bit of a difference. Uh, but time will tell. Time will tell. Uh, the run cam orange does just fine. Um, yeah, it's a decent camera. It's it, it's not a session though. Like this is this is the the bar this is what everybody's trying to get to um and i haven't found anything that is quite exactly like this the closest i've found is this at this point it's this guy yeah i think i think the big the big selling point of the gopros at least here in the U.S., is the Best Buy uh, black tie protection plan because it was like you could go out and smash this thing, go back, get, get a new one for whatever the whatever the uh, the protection plan costs, and you could just keep doing that over and over and over. I know they've they've messed it up now where you've got to send the GoPro or, or Best Buy has to send the GoPro to the GoPro analysis place to find out. Oh, yep, this one it looks like it's been run over by a truck. Yep, we can't repair it, and then you get another one, but. Um, it's still better than buying one of these out of whole cloth every time, which, you know, sucks. <laughs> All lawyers are douchebags, man. Granat, welcome from Portugal. Welcome to the live stream, my friend. Glad to have you here. Yeah, Brian, Brian Bentley, thanks. Uh, I'd appreciate if you put that picture up so I can see it. Um, sessions are basically unattainable in Ca Canada right now. I have to pay a $100 premium to get one. Ugh. No thanks. You want to see a douchebag? Wait till you see the... Newest Michael Rollins interview with DJI's lawyer. Oh boy. 
Uh, I really like uh, Michael Rollins, his uh, his whole interview series. I, I've, I've very much enjoyed those. Uh, had to return my Emacs uh, from its starts. Had to return my Emacs Baby Hawk 2 HD. Got the death roll on Maiden Flight. Race to Quad has no issues replacing it. Should be here within a week. Awesome. That is what we need to do in this hobby. We need to stop fixing this stuff. When you buy something new and it's junk or something's not working on it, send it back. Send it back to the retailer, the manufacturer, whatever. Got to send it back. Stop fixing things that you shouldn't have to fix. Uh, it's the only way you're going to get these these manufacturers to be held accountable for their shoddy quality control. But with that said, I'll probably end up fixing whatever I get that's broken, depending if I got to spend money on it or not. Terry Bennett, welcome. How are you doing? Uh, Race to Quad's pretty good about stuff like that. They sent me a replacement flight, flight controller for one I got. It was DOA. Oh, let's talk about customer service here. So uh, if you guys have been following uh, the, the latest news, uh, I've got one of these. This is the uh, iFlight Beast uh, H7 flight controllers. There is a defect that is inside this flight controller with the way it's designed where I think on Betaflight 4.3, the newest versions are coming out. Uh, basically, in a nutshell, um, a bi-directional D-Shot won't work on this flight controller. So uh, I haven't installed it. I bought it back in February. Uh, waiting to put this in the uh, Umagod sub or the 250 frame. Uh, contacted Power Drone and said, hey, uh, I'd like to return this thing because there is a defect in this board. They said, sure, if it's unopened and uh, resellable, go ahead and we'll, we'll take it back. Uh, I emailed them back, said, well, I removed the outer packaging on it, the, the, the cellophane, uh, but everything's in there. It's never been soldered up, never been used, never been connected. And uh, they said, mm, Sorry, uh, we uh, we can't do anything for you, but uh, thank you for your honesty and we'll give you a discount on whatever replacement product you want to uh, replace us with. So uh, they're sticking to their, their return policy, which is fine. I, I kind of appreciate that a little bit. Uh, still kind of a bummer that, you know, I can't return it because this is, I don't know. I, I, I hope there's a fix coming for this. I don't think there will be. I think it's a hardware issue. Um, But, I mean, at least they offered a coupon to, uh, or a discount for a replacement product. I don't know what that discount will be. I already get uh, a little bit of discount there for being uh, active duty, so um, we'll see. But um, I was really looking forward to this, uh, something different, and it was stupid expensive. This thing was way too expensive. Man, see that button? Came in, came in handy. Uh, so that's unfortunate, but it is what it is. Uh... I, I fully call the retailers when it's not good. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> this is America, and if something sucks, we deserve our money back. Damn straight, man. Damn straight. Yeah, DJI's lawyer is too comfortable with FAA and remote idea. Yeah, a barometer and D shot uh, bug is kind of what it is. Uh, bought, bought mine direct from iFlight, and it doesn't work. Uh, they have not replied to me at all. So frustrated. Um, I've had really good luck with iFlight. I have a X class right there uh, that I was using all iFlight gear. I was using the the Sussex F7 Twin G. I was using um, their 80 amp ESCs, their PDB. Everything was iFlight. Even their motors were iFlight. Uh, I had a problem where that quad was frying ESC number three every single time I flew it. I changed out every component. Uh, eventually I changed out the PDB and the issue went away. Don't know how a PDB could cause this issue, but I contacted iFlight and mind you, a lot of this gear wasn't even bought from iFlight. I contacted iFlight. They paid me for uh, the PDB, the flight controller and every ESC that this thing ate. They issued me a refund for more than I even paid from iFlight because some of the stuff was from Banggood. So that was pretty impressive. And when I talked to these these retailers, I don't use the, the whole tweet FBE thing. I, I use my personal email, my personal contact. So that went a huge, uh, that was huge for me from iFlight. Um, hopefully, hopefully they get back to you. Definitely I give them some time, uh, at least for me here in the US, it's like a 24 hour turnaround on emails. And usually they email me at like three in the morning. Uh, my DG, my uh, Diatone GTP339 literally dropped out of the sky uh, on flight number two. That, that's disappointing. Um, 
first thing I would ask is, do you have uh, your OSD warning elements on and did you DVR it? That could tell you a lot. Uh, man, it's kind of ghetto with Pyrodrone. I think get if he would have returned it. Yeah, they probably would have, but I mean, they got a policy. They got a policy. So let that be a warning. If you do buy some gear and you don't plan on installing it for a while, don't open it up and go, ooh, pretty cool. Even the package. All right, so uh, let's let's get over to this giveaway. Uh, I've got 24 entries. for the Beta 65X. Uh, let's go ahead and throw that up on the wheel here in a couple minutes. If you are interested in getting it on the giveaway for this little guy, um, get into the entry. You guys should know by now where it's at. And if you find out where it's at and you're not one of those people that are up there, um, man, please consider, please consider it. Uh, Diatone support was what you'd expect, um, yeah. The button takes emphasis out of cussing. Yeah, it does. Um, I haven't been demonetized for swearing in a video yet. Uh, I know it's gonna come eventually. Uh, let's see, you can still use it. I uh, just got the iFlight Beast as well. It is no good. Is it no good? At all? Oh, all right, that's a question. Can you still use it? Uh, I got the new words. Family Giver says, can you still use it? I just got the iFlight Beast as well. It is no good at all, question mark. Uh, so the H7, um, basically you're gonna have to stick with uh, Betaflight 3.2.6, something like that. Oh, hang on. I think it's with, only with the H7. And if you haven't opened it up and you have an H7, I would recommend sending it back to wherever you purchased it from, considering it's a damn near $100 flight controller. iFlight's got like the worst website. All right, here we go. Due to changes in the development of Betaflight 4.3.0 code, still not really at this point, the H7 pin reconfiguration for D-Shot uh, change and the RPM filter ability of this board after 4.2.6 maintenance releases have fixed this simulation. Hardware is not compatible with the change software specifications anymore and contains a bug on the Motor 3 D-Shot communication. And uh, I'll just put a link to this. You can, you can read it. <clears throat> All right, so uh, RPM filtering can only be used with Jav Mavs. Uh, our new accurate DSP301 barometer can only be used with, with Betaflight 4.3 and above. RPM filtering can only be used with Jazz Maverick firmware, BL Heli M. JSC is not supported. Betaflight 4.2.6 will work with RPM filtering, but does not recognize the barometer. Uh, they're making a V2, so uh, you can buy another one later yeah so that's disappointing and that's where we're at with the uh, the iFlight beast unfortunately oh where the heck was that comment at so family guyver if it's if you got the h7 and you haven't opened it up um i would say send it back at least i would do it if it were mine uh, the new EMU flight uh, 1.0.0 will probably filter without bidirectional D shot just fine. And will also support the barometer, just saying. It's good to know. Try EMU flight. If it doesn't work, get him. <laughs> just get. Uh, how does bidirectional D shot compare to like D shot 600 or whatever? Uh, you need both. You need a D shot, and bidirectional D shot is for uh, RPM filtering, uh, but it it's the same thing. I mean, D shot is the the communication protocol for the the motors to the ESC or from the flight controller to the ESCs. Uh, it's a digital protocol, uh, and then the bidirectional is a communication line between um, the ESC and the flight controller, telling the flight controller at what RPM the the motors are running, so that Betaflight can adjust the filtering. This is real layman's terms, but 
You need both if you want to do bi-directional D-shot. Uh, how did you contact iFlight? Just curious if uh, you went another route. Uh, just their customer service line. Got to give them some time, though. Uh, where's it at? Where's what at? Uh, BVTV. As, thanks, man. No problem. I don't know what you're thinking before. Uh, Benjamin, uh, what's your favorite freestyle quad? Oh, my favorite freestyle quad? Oh, all right. You're gonna, you guys are going to love this. Uh, so I don't really care for a whole lot of uh, bind and flies. So I prefer to build my own quad. And this is my favorite. This is the FPV Cycle Glide 5 inch. I don't know what that's for. That's a spoiler alert. Uh, yes, OST earnings on and no DVR. Mm, man, uh, can't help you a whole lot there unless you manage to remember that. Uh, sorry, uh, William. Uh, OSD warnings on no DVR. I don't know if you remember seeing like RX loss or fail safe or some sort of warning. Did the quad like spin on the way down or did it just kind of like dip an arm and kind of like waggle its way to the ground? Those are two completely different things. If it, if it's spun to death on the way down, it's usually either a bad ESC or motor. Um, if it just kind of dropped an arm and kind of fell, uh, that's usually uh, a fail safe. Uh, Family Guy, where I opened it and looked at it. Who'd you purchase it from? Uh, when we can subsequent plug in and the smoke came out. Yep. Okay, well. Uh, I would say you need uh, need some new parts, man. Sorry to hear it. Yeah, it's always it's always a curious if the fall caused the smoke or if the smoke is what caused the fall or if the two are related, you know what I mean? Uh, Beef Baron, go to his Instagram and show you how to get there. You have to be a Patreon. Nope. Bidirectional uh, D shot allows you to use RPM filtering on beta flight. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I couldn't get warnings to display with Emu flight. Well, that's sucks. Uh, Brand value work on a new dynamic notch that tracks peaks better than the old one. I've been told that RPM notch filtering used bidirectional D shot might not even be necessary going forward. Just saying. Uh, these beast h7 might end up working better on emu flight 1.0 better than beta flight 4.3 but yeah send it back if you can yeah exactly if again this goes back to my previous statement of hold these manufacturers accountable um you know this is the same thing as the flywheel explorer having the the dgi glitching osd and everybody said oh it's you know a, a bug in beta flight it's not a bug in beta flight beta flight was never intended to run msp uh for uh soft serial never intended it just happened to work in the past and the new implementations of beta flight uh broke that ability because it was never designed it just happened to work before and if you you have a v1 flywheel explorer check out my video on how to fix that it's not a hard fix uh that being said i'm around the beast f7 and it's pretty awesome yeah i kind of wish i would have went with the f7 but i figured you know what uh i've got an h7 in my race quad so let's try an h7 just try a new gear Robbie, welcome to the live stream, my friend. Uh, Eric Allen, good looking quad. It is a ultra light quad as well. I think I've got that down to, um, I can't remember the, the weight, but I got a picture of it somewhere. Somewhere. All up weight with a 1100 milliamp uh, 6S pack, a session, and a GoPro mount props and everything 598 grams oh and it flies like 598 grams it is by far the uh, the best flying quad that um that i have right now uh word fv thanks man it gives me uh it gives me i'm, I'm new here it's Word FPV, but I've been watching you and I appreciate your content. Hey man, thanks for uh, thanks for watching. Thanks for uh, you know supporting me in whatever way you have. Really appreciate it. Uh, that Glide is Ciotti's go-to quad. Uh, hit him up for tuning tips. Uh, yeah, he he is the man with the glides, and uh, it's his go-to frame. It's my go-to frame as well. I've got a couple different glides, but uh, Pyrodone, uh purchased it from him. Same as you, my friend. Uh, you know what? Maybe. Maybe email him. Maybe hit him up. Uh, it, 
I would definitely email them and say, hey man, there's an issue. Maybe eventually if they get enough people saying, hey, there's a problem with this thing, they're gonna be willing to take them all back. I don't know. Uh, NASM, I've calibrated the voltage meter on my Mobile 6, and when I plug it in, fully charged battery shows at less than four volts uh, when idle. Shows less than four volts when idle. Why is that? Are they four volts at idle? You know, I mean, uh, it depends on the quality of your batteries. It depends on the quality of your, your meter leads. Um, idle as in the prop spinning or idle just sitting there with the VTX on? Yeah, but like, you know, William, William McEwen, yep. Yeah, either way, board's dead. Um, sorry, man. Uh, it starts. Anyone have any issues with the DRL sim not loading? Uh, I don't know. I haven't played the DRL sim in a long time. Uh, and, yep, Mike Bergman, that is a pretty light. Oh, you know what? The, the, the link's still open, Private Island. I haven't closed it yet. Uh, I'm going to close it here in about, uh, I don't know, maybe... All right, five minutes. Uh, 11.15. We're going to close this thing down and spin that sucker. Yeah, I'll close that down here in just a minute. Well, let's see. Let's go to this one. There we go. Kind of move the setup around a little bit. Um, got the extension for the desk. Got the PC farther away from the microphone because I was starting to hear a little bit of fan noise. Um, third monitor, just one I had floating around in the, the little workroom over there connected to nothing. Uh, I've got my OBS overlay here, got my chat and uh, a couple of, like the utilities in the background on this screen. And then this is like when I switch to uh, my desktop share, that's this one here. Um, worked on the lighting for the bench cam. It's more diffused, not so direct like it was before. Um, got another light. Really liking the setup now. Go XLR edge right here. Stream deck there. Um, the GoXLR, I, I really like this thing. Just having the faders on it where I can just kind of turn everything up and down, you know, willy-nilly as I need it. I can mute, like, background music, just one button, mute, done. And then another slider for the system volume, and then another one for uh, what I hear in my headphones. It says chat at the top, but uh, whatever. You could, you could set it up exactly the way you want it. This thing is incredible for streaming. It basically turns... It basically routes all the different audio channels. I think there's like six different channels. So I have one channel that's specifically for the music. Oh, another one that's specifically for the system sound, the microphone, the line in, the line. It is so functional and the preamps make it sound so, so good. Really, really digging this thing. I'm not even, not even upset that I overpaid for it. Well, maybe a little bit. Maybe a little bit. Terry Bennett, can someone help me? Uh, what is user one in the mode switches? Uh, beta flight 4.2, it's on my beta 65 pro. User one, beta 65 pro. Let's see, what FC is in it? What is user one in the mode switches in Betaflight 4.2? Let me uh, let me grab an FC to connect here, and I can. Uh... Oh, here we go. Going right here. So you're talking about uh, this one here, user one. 
that is typically assigned with uh, using the pin IO box. So basically, uh, it is assigning a switch on your controller to activate a pin on your flight controller. Uh, what they have it for on the Beta 85 Pro, I have no idea. Um, let's see. What, what quad was that again? That was the 85 Pro. Does that have a HD recorder? Because if it does, then that's probably assigned to start a DVR of some sort. Look through the spec page on the uh, on the 85 Pro. I don't see any reason why they would have that set up. No, I don't see a reason why they would have that set up. Uh, Brandon Bentley got a build today. Put it off till nearly everything is broken. Then. Uh, Fix a few quads, new motors, frame, camera on one, fixing loose wires on another, installed larger, uh, installing on a larger, oh, dang it, installing a logger on a whoop. Cool. Uh, I've always been interested in trying one of those standalone loggers for the, the whoops. Um, interesting. Are the giveaways for just cool people or can I enter too? I don't know. Why don't you try? Uh, Tweet FV, they, uh, they only put so much smoke inside these electronics. Yeah, I know. Um, picture going around it was a uh, replacement uh, electronic smoke in a can uh, I can't seem to find it but it was like a mason jar with some smoke in it for electronics it's kind of funny uh, don't think the link is working huh I don't know what link you're talking about oh do I have a weird link in the, uh, the video description here let's see No, I didn't put a link to the uh, giveaway in the video description. Well, I found a, I mean, there's a way to get to the link in the video description. Uh, I've had to use user mode one switch. Oh, that's that's what it could be. They could have uh, like a pit switch assigned to that. That's what it might be. Eh, I don't know. Uh, let's see, this guy can view has the old chat layout uh, still. Hmm, interesting. Let's go back to that. Oh, yep, it does. Um, I think I left it that way for a reason, but I can't remember what it was. But uh, thank you. Terry Bennett, yes. Terry Bennett, no. Okay, thanks, that helped. <laughs> All right. Uh, the D run open logger is the best, but they're not available anymore. They make more. Um, yeah. Mike Bergman, best answer ever. Uh, I'll pay $30 for, <laughs> for one if anyone has it. Uh, for the, uh, the open lagger. Sorry, not logger, lagger. All right, folks. Uh, 26 people have entered the giveaway. And I'm going to shut it down in five, four, three, two, and one. All right, entries are closed. That to get to the the giveaways for my monthly quad giveaways, uh, you have to go to Patreon. You do not need to be a Patreon member, uh, but um, you know I'm going to keep it open for now. Um, I may just shut it down and make it just patron only eventually, but uh, for now it's open to everybody. You still got just got to go to Patreon. Uh, that's where I do all my giveaways or most of my my quad giveaways for the month. Or over on Patreon, I'll put the link to the um, to the form over there, and uh, that's how you get a hold of it. 
So we got 26 entries and just a little bit of analytics here. Uh, 65% of them are actually Patreon members, provided they responded correctly. And uh, the other 34 are not. All right, let's get this over on the wheel. All right. There we go. There's everybody for the giveaway. All right, somebody give me a, a number between 10 and 50. Thirty-six. Mad Fisher gets a thirty-six. We'll go to one, two, three, four, five. There, thirty-six. All right, guys. Uh, thank you for entering. Thank you for your support. If you're a Patreon member, big thanks to you guys, all the cool kids up here. Um, if you're not up here, uh, two bucks, two bucks a month. That's hardly anything, and it uh, helps me out a lot. Every bit of uh, income that comes from those folks goes directly back to you guys in the form of giveaways. And uh, we'll talk about the next giveaway in just a minute here. All right, there we go. Five, four, three, two, one, and good luck. Uh, LS, what are your thoughts on the Luminar QAS five inch frame? Good frame, good solid frame with plenty of extra parts available for it. Here we go. Who's it gonna be? Is it gonna be Robbie? Here we go, Robbie Store. One of my new patron members for this month. Congratulations, my friend. Uh, hit me up over on uh, tweetfb at gmail.com. We'll talk about uh, some logistics to get this sucker to you. Uh, thank you, everybody who entered. I hope you guys enjoy these these uh, giveaways. I enjoy I enjoy them uh, probably just as much as you guys do. Uh, granted, um, I'm not I don't have the uh, the stress of whether I get it or not, but you know, uh, hope you guys enjoy those things. I I, I enjoy doing the giveaways uh, a lot. All right, so Next Patreon giveaway is this. This is a completely built, high value, FV cycle glide, five inch, um, yeah, screw it, bind and fly, provided you're on FR Sky. Uh, this is sub 600 grams, all up with a session five and a uh, 1100 milliamp 6S pack. Uh, still doing some tuning on it. This thing is tight. This is the best flying quad I own right now. Um, the only thing I really skimped on was the, uh, the FPV antenna. This is one of the little Emacs, um, stubby deals, uh, just because I know people have different, different opinions on antenna. So I wasn't going to break the bank on it, but this thing is ready to go. And the, the whole idea behind this is I'm building up my ideal five inch, uh, freestyle. And this will be, um, this will be something that I give away as a pre-built kit so it's going to have all the parts in a box you got to build it yourself i'll send the tune that i have and the configuration to you digitally that way you can just do the cli dumpage and put it in there um, i was kind of hoping betaflight 4.3 would come out as an official release so i could get a uh, tune built up for 4.3 but unfortunately it's not there um, something that does make a huge difference with this is the variable frequency um yet a variable PWM frequency, uh, ESC configuration. God, what uh, words, words are escaping me. Uh, but that makes a pretty big difference on this. Uh, really definitely feel the difference, uh, switching to that over, you know, the stock 48 kilohertz or 24 kilohertz, however you have it set up, but this will be the next giveaway. Um, if you want to be notified of when this comes out, uh, definitely become a patron, uh, they are the only ones that will get a notification that this is live. And this one is going to be 
short. I am planning, I'm not planning on doing a month long entry period. This is gonna be uh, three days. I'm gonna have the, the entry form for this live for only three days leading up to the live stream where I give this away. So if you're not a Patreon member, you're probably gonna miss out on it. Uh, this is built and funded by all the income from these fine folks up there uh, with the amount of income that I have coming in through Patreon. This is gonna be an every other month build giveaway. Uh, if you guys are interested in this, become a Patreon member, tweetfeed.com if you wanna find a way to uh, become one, real quick way to get to it there. Um, also, I'm curious, would you guys wanna see a, a pre-built five inch freestyle uh, race quad setup box type thing? Let me know, kinda curious. So that's gonna be the guy. Uh, let's go through the components here. So this is an Akon. Uh, I got all the parts here. So the camera is the Foxier Razor Micro, 16 by nine. Or sorry, 4.3, I hate 16 by nine. 4.3, the uh, VTX is the Flywheel VTX 600. The ESC is the Akon 32 PIN, 35 amp with the uh with the the heat sink removed the heat sink is a big pain in the ass on these things uh and it needs to go the the heat sink takes up far too much space and you can't attach any uh mounting hardware since the the floss is a split deck style not really split deck style but split style so um you have esc here flight controller here i can't get any uh mounting hardware on top of the ESC with that heat sink on there. So that guy has to go, pretty easy to remove. And the flight controller is the CL Racing F4 Mini. Motors are the e uh, Emax Eco 2 uh, 1800 KV motors, I believe. That's what I put on this. What the hell did I? Oh, sorry, 1900 KV. Um, and like I said, the, the antenna is just a little Emacs stubby deal. It gets the job done. Um, so that is going to be the Patreon giveaway for next month. Well, not really Patreon giveaway, but Tweet FEV giveaway for next month. Uh, I hope you guys are excited about this or as excited as I am. Oh, and by the way, the props are uh, the uh, Gem Fan Hurricane 51 466 by threes. Um, I'll include the beat up ones from the testing and a new set. So, I hope you guys are excited. I'm super excited about that one. It's, uh, I've been, I've spent a lot of time on that and it is, it is a super tight build, very good build. Oh my goodness, let's go back to the chat. That's what I get for trashing bait FEB. <laughs> uh, it better if you told earlier, LOL. Um, uh, Nazem, I, I, what are you referring to, man? Uh, sorry, I'm behind in the chat. Uh, Robbie Store, what did I win? I was late to the stream. You won the uh, Beta 80 or 65 XHD, the, the, the giveaway quad for the month. Private Island, I don't have a glide yet. How perfect. Uh, glides are awesome. Uh, if you guys are looking for a really, really solid five inch freestyle frame, get the FPV cycle glide. Um, plenty of spare parts are available for it usually, and it is ultra light. It's uh, a decent frame to build in. Uh, you just gotta remember to lay out your gear appropriately. Flight controller in the front, ESC in the middle, and uh, VTX in the back. The one thing I don't like about the glide is it's set up for M2 hardware for the flight control of the VTX and the ESC. So there is a little bit of zzzz with a drill bit that's required on this frame for my build because M2 hardware can, you know, it is garbage hardware. I absolutely hate working with M2 hardware. <laughs> Rob Logan, he wasn't even here, I know. Uh, uh, Mike Bergman, when is that giveaway? Well, you'll find out if you're one of these guys. Oh, 
<laughs> we should make bets on what 4.3 releases. Uh, <laughs> pull. <laughs> or a 4. <laughs> OpenTX 4.2 comes out. Yeah, that's that's yeah. Ever. Uh, let's see. <laughs> I'll take that bet and give you the shaft. Uh, pull. Uh, Akon and Young Jeezy. Uh, Rick Cepeda would love to see a five inch race quad. Okay. Okay. I got one. I got one that wants it. Uh, <laughs> oh, the chat has fallen off the uh, fallen off the rails. My favorite pole is Pavel's Pluskowski. Uh, my grandmother is Polish. Off the boat and everything. Now it sells my grandfather. Uh, I've been hooked on the prototype five, uh, prototype fives FV cycle Imperials. Good gear. Yeah, those are excellent motors. Um, this quad is intended to be high value. Uh, the Emax Eco twos. I am very impressed at a the durability and b the performance. Uh, I started using those on my my Steel five uh, frame from um, Banggood. Really impressed with the performance of those motors. They're high value, meaning they're not the best motor in the world, but for what they're retailing for, they're pretty darn good. <laughs> I like the censorship, yep. Oh, really? Okay, all right, all right, it starts, hang on, all right. It, it, it's an easy fix here, not, not... show you how it works out. All right. On my network drive, where I have all my logos, I have all my Patreons. The hardest part is just keeping this list up to date. So, what do I do? Do I add one before uh, Elia, or do I add one after uh, the old JB? I think we'll try this. I'll put one before. I'll save it. So, that should fix that. We'll see. <laughs> there we go. Look, it's fixed. It, it works right now. Yeah. Guys, I have a ton of time into this whole streaming setup. Like, just stupid amounts of time. I really hope my wife's not watching and seeing how this. It starts. No, you're not being too picky. Thank you for helping me out. Anybody sees anything on the live stream that is kind of off whack or needs to be addressed or something that just doesn't look right, let me know, man. Uh, I want to fix it. I want to fix it. Uh, what do you think of the Team Motor F7 Mini Stack? I think it's a great stack, uh, really good stack. Uh, better. Yep, yep, it is better. <laughs> hey, Eric Allen, go for it, man. I appreciate the input. You built a 237 gram five inch Athex? Jeez. Using what, uh, 2004 motors? Or 2204s? Is that 20, 235, 37 grams with battery and HD camera and everything? Nerdcopter, greetings, Earthlings and Earth Things. Uh, have any of you watched Earthlings? Don't. It'll, it'll, it'll fuck you up. There you go. That button's useless. Absolutely useless. <laughs> All right. So let's talk about the super chat giveaway today. Uh, if anybody's interested, give away a set of motors. These are 2207. Lots of background noise. 2207 Racer Star. Sick. 2207 1888 KV motors. These are. Another high value motor. They're not the best, they're not the worst, but they are really good for what they what they deliver and what they cost. Let's see if I can. Yeah, come on. Focus you. There we go. There we go. And these are the uh 
the like blue splash camo looking ones. These are really good motors. Uh, really enjoyed these. I had these on my um, Exorcist frame, which I have since parted with. I couldn't bring myself to fly it, so I sold it to somebody else who was. Uh, if you don't know what the Diatone Exorcist is, um, it's one of the sexiest looking frames in the game. Made by Diatone. All right, $5 super chat for set of motors. Uh, winner, if you're in the US, I'll cover shipping. If you're outside of the US, we'll, we'll work something out. Um, and hopefully I don't forget to put someone's name on there. Actually, I'm going to do that right now. Video. Wheelie of names. And Rob Logan Jr. Jr. Look at this. Here we go. Since I, since I, I, my bad, I didn't get the super chat from last week. One, two. Because I owe you, buddy. I owe you. Private Island, I built a 250 gram 5 inch. Well, 4.9 is a 360 go, but when it faces south, it's. <laughs> Extra protons colliding. Yeah, for the FAA regulations, it needs to be under 250 grams. So 249.99 gets you in there. Uh, you know what I figure what, what I would do if I was ever approached by LE uh, about flying? I would just put it in the grass and ditch it, just disarm. Be like, what quad? Find it, bitch. That's the way I would do it. Leave your personal name off your OSD in case they're uh, they're trying to. Ch I, I don't know how they're gonna enforce this shit. Got useless, absolutely useless. I don't know how they're gonna enforce this. You know, Sunny Bunny on the wheel for five dollars or for one entry. There we go. It's darts counting you in with that two entries. And by the way, guys, I. I absolutely hate this wheel of names. I don't know why it always does this. It starts for two entries. Uh, by the way, I am going to shuffle these, so you're not going to get two names. Your name butted up against each other. They will be shuffled and mixed. However, the program decides to do it. That's the way it'll do it. <laughs> and uh, Rob Logan, I'm sorry, but it starts is going to, he's going to win it. That's just the way it is. <laughs> Should I just keep doing that every time I say something that I shouldn't? I just do it afterwards. It's just kind of as a point. <laughs> uh... Eric Allen, 10 bucks on the wheel for two. Let's see, enter, enter, there we go. I think if I do it too fast, it spins the wheel. It's really annoying. Eric Allen, uh, thanks for all your help with getting into racing. Building the drag car has been my uh, dream since I was little, but this is the only kind of racing I can afford. Yep, yep, sorry, man. Uh, it, it was awesome seeing you out, out the field. Um, I really haven't met any of my uh, my supporters before, so that was kind of cool. Um, hope you really get into it. Uh, I know it's a bit of a hike for you, but there is another race chapter out around your area. Uh, Sela, Sela 5, Sela 5, something like that. Um, I, they, every once in a while, they do a like an LED night track race, and I really want to get over there. Um, uh, Johnny Tojam that you met, he went to it once, and uh, I definitely want to make it over there at some point and do one of those. Uh, Mo Blades, welcome. How you doing, man? Mike Bergman, bingo, bing, bingo. That's my plan uh, for if I get approached. Dump it a mile away. I'm watching a movie. Yep, evidence, baby. Uh, Athex, no HD on the frame yet. I really could make it lighter. Athex, what are your specs? What what parts did you put into that? And my stream seems to be dying. I don't. What is going on with this? All right. I don't know. It, it, 
I'm I'm watching back my stream through YouTube Studio and I'm getting like the the loading screen, but then again, I'm also an hour and a half behind uh, on that, so uh, hopefully it's not glitching for you guys. Polly FPV, uh, thanks for everything you do for the community tweet. You are very much welcome. Um, I love doing this. Private Island for Canadian 15. I have no idea what that's worth. Uh, two plus a tiny tip. Thanks, Dan. Uh, love when I'm able to catch your live streams. Thank you, my friend. Um, I think this is going to become my new normal streaming time. I know uh, Mr. Bardwell comes on at noon, so in like 20 minutes. I don't think he's streaming today. At least, at least I, that's what I remember hearing. So we can go a little long. Um, a, Sunday is usually a lot easier for me with the family. Uh, plus having that two-hour cap if I start at 8 o'clock and end it, uh, or start at 10 and, 10 and end at noon. Um, usually works out pretty good for me as well. Gives me plenty of time to go and hang out. But uh, definitely look out during the week because if I'm sitting here working on stuff, I may just spark up the live stream, put on the old sky cam, and just kind of chit chat with you guys while I'm working. A uh, big thing that I did that really it really helps out with working on the bench is I had my camera arm mounted here. Um, this uh, Elgato multi mount that the that the key lights on is strong enough that I can mount my uh, my Manfrotto arm to it for my bench cam. So I've got nothing blocking my desk here, um, which I've got a lot of work coming up. Um, I'm doing a FPV flight demonstration for the University of South Alabama uh, on Wednesday. Uh, gonna bring some quads out there and I'm gonna try doing the buddy box thing. So I, I'm just gonna bring a tooth, I'm gonna have a toothpick. I'll bring it up, fly it, and I'll let somebody else give it a shot while it's up and in in the air and I could just buddy you know terminate the buddy box link and regain control of it if things get kind of hairy um, also bring in bring in the big boy I'm gonna bring this guy with me it's always a crowd pleaser um, everybody loves the X class but it's been a while since I've flown it there's actually there's actually cobwebs on it right now on the props there's I got a bunch of cobwebs on it so it does need to be uh, checked out tuned um, and I got to replace the receiver on it um, yeah it's got a it's got a R9 mm OTA in it I have no idea what version is on it I know I know it's expired or it's, it's old, which it's fine. I put the MM in there for a reason so I could reflash it, but uh, I just don't want to take that much gear with me. You know, screw it. I'll probably just update it and, and let it go. Uh, Aethic said to post it in, earlier in the chat. Oh man, I must have missed it. Let's see, he said he built a 237 gram. Oh, here it is. Uh, let's see, a shocker frame. So that's a Chaos Machine Works 2004s. Okay, newbie drone. Uh, 30 by 30 stacks, 600 milliamp tramp, uh, nano cam, and a 3S. Okay, that, that explains why you're getting the weight. Oh, man. I, you know, I've been flying Crossfire, I've been flying Tracer, I've been flying R9. Uh, and then now with Ghost coming out with their micro module, have you seen the Proton Packs? This is making it very difficult to not uh, switch over to uh, Ghost. Oh, here it is. This is what I'm looking for, the hybrid. So it's got it's got basically a tramp built into it and the, uh, the Ghost receiver in the 20 by 20 board. This kind of stuff right here, this is big. Uh, for racing, Everything being mounted on a tiny little board. There's no soldering necessarily. Like, like I know TBS has something like that, but you've got to solder. You, you got to have the board. You got to solder the VTX to it. You got to solder the receiver to it. This is all done. It is ready to rock. This is the kind of stuff that I think is going to make the Immersion RC Ghost the probably the one to go to. Um, I'm having a real hard time not 
Uh, not getting one of these. And the other thing is, it's one RF module, or it's one antenna for the receiver, which uh, that is another thing I do not like about Tracer. Tracer's great, I, I know it's great, but um, let's see, what? 119 for a setup to get you out the door, going with a VTX, with a VTX. So let's do some quick math here. I haven't actually added up how much it is. So 30 bucks for a VTX or for a receiver. Tracer TBS Unified Nano, that's another 30 bucks. So we're at $130 to get kind of the same setup as what you would get with the Immersion RC stuff. Um, this is our, uh, questionably better uh, for racing than um, the Tracer stuff. It's lower latency, supposedly, so we'll see. But um, I like that it's one antenna, BTX and receiver are built into the board, not just soldered to a board, but built into a purpose-built board. Um, not really sure what the power output is on this thing. Let's see. One to 600 milliwatts. So it is up to 500 milliwatts of output power, so higher output not by much i mean 100 milliwatts is, ain't shit but i don't know what do you guys think um do you think the uh wh what do you think's better wh what is going to be better tracer or ghost um in the long run both for racing and uh regular acro -y type stuff uh dustin gal would be afraid to uh, fly something that big what a beast uh you know what when you're flying it it, it makes it makes no difference. You don't even realize how big it is when you're flying it until you a, either fly by yourself and that is kind of nerve wracking because the sound is unlike anything else. It's like having a, having like a small plane flying next to you. Um, and then like when you happen to see your shadow on the ground from the sun, you're like, oh man, this thing is huge. Uh, the only thing I'm afraid of is crashing it because it's going to be, you know, a couple hundred bucks every time. You, every, every component on there is a hundred bucks. Motor's a hundred bucks. ESC is a hundred bucks. Flight stack, a hundred bucks. Um, yeah, I, I do worry about crashing it. Uh, question. I have no clue why the props are not maximized on the X class or the arms are minimized. Uh, X class was not designed to be performance. It was designed to be, um, a spectator sport so people can see it. That's why it's so damn big. Um, I don't know why they don't put bigger props on it. Um, I've tried bigger props on it and they don't work really well. These 13 inch props seem to be the sweet spot. Uh, shortening it down turns it into a beast class, which I could hack the arms in half basically and still clear those props and then becomes a beast class, which isn't like an official race class as far as beast class goes. So there's X class. So, and then beast class is something in between. Um, so if you're racing an actual X class event, it's gotta be that size. Uh, Sunny Bunny, the FC VTX combo. No, it's uh, the VTX and RX combo. Have you tried Exp Express LRS? No, I haven't. I have a module coming. There was an R9 module in that Speedy Cares package that I was going to uh, pick up, pull out, but you know what? I figured I'll let somebody else take care of that or let somebody else get a chance at it. I uh, want to do Ghost, but Freedom uh, TX doesn't have Ghost for some reason. Um, yeah, I mean, why why would TBS make 
their version of OpenTX run with Ghost. That, that's just stupid. Why would they do that? But then again, that's the same bullshit that everybody says about FR Sky when they release their radios and it doesn't have Ghost or, or Crossfire protocol on it because they're not going to internally develop stuff to work with other with their competitors when it becomes a uh, when it becomes adopted into OpenTX for OpenTX 2.4, which we know is never going to come out, uh, you'll probably see all the integration for all the different modules and protocols in there. What is the VTX power uh, of that 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 board? 600 milliwatts. Uh, VTX power on the X class is one milliwatt. Mike Bourbon kind of frustrates me that Trappy won't consider shrinking the Nano RX. I'm hardcore TBS, but I wish things would be shrinking. So he won't take advice from anybody. That's just the way it is. He, always, I mean, and I get it. You know that they they're at where they're at because of their innovation, but. When you know a competitor has a really good idea and you could implement it and you just say, nah, nah, I'm not going to follow. I'm going to lead. I'll take it for what it's worth. What it's worth. Private Island X-Class um, giveaway. <laughs> no. Uh, that was actually sponsored by Banggood, uh, believe it or not. <laughs> After such a shit beep is killing me. Uh... Yeah, I think they're both going to be good. Um, I really like Tracer. It's I definitely like Tracer for racing over any other protocol I've used. Um, but by that same logic, that means Ghost is going to be better because it's lower latency. Uh, yeah, it can destroy X-Class. So uh, the typical, well, up until about last year, the X-Class, well, a year and a half ago, the X-Class props were always like the uh, the screw master whatever they were carbon fiber props and they would just crack shatter very easily um i think gem fan that's what these are actually made like a purpose-built x-class prop the props you we were using before were for like fixed wing aircraft that you know if you crash it who cares if you break a prop because the rest of it's destroyed uh these are actually pretty damn durable uh i also have a uh, brain f uh, V1 flight controller, so uh, I do have a 5 volt regulator. Oh, okay. Wow. Um, Mike Bergman and I love Beast Class. I really love the 7 inch 50 volt uh, abortion that Nurk built. <laughs> yeah. Uh, this one's only run on 8S. It's not on 12. I really should do 12, but the iFlight ESCs are only rated up to 8S, unfortunately. And I didn't want to go with, um, was it PDC? Uh, I can't remember the name of the company that makes like the, you know, what you would expect for beast class or uh, X class type electronics. Uh, yeah, unfortunately. I heard iFlight was coming out with a more powerful ESC or one that could take more. No, it's, it's these guys here. Yeah, so 80 amp, two to eight S. Uh, this this is the one that was uh, this setup was frying one of these ESCs every time I flew it, and I'm just doing hover checks. I would do them over the trampoline, and it would pfft, crap itself out and land on the trampoline. Um, you know, good ESC, but I don't know why it was frying itself all the time. Uh, LS is okay. Your props are separated by just a quarter inch. Uh, this is happening on my QAV S5 inch. I'm using a T-Motor Blackbird with uh, five point inch props. Yeah, that's fine. Um, as long as they're not touching. Uh, also, something you might want to consider. Um, I've had props touch standoffs before. You grab your 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 frame and you can take and flex the prop up and down. You might see it contact. Um, you know what? Let me just. I got one right here. Hang on. All right, so I have a QAV. Um, 
QAVS five inch. Take a look at this. So yeah, the gap is pretty, pretty tight on this thing, as you can see. Uh, yeah, it's about a quarter inch. These are uh, 5.1 inch props. This is perfectly fine. The only issues I, ev I ever find with props really is touching the back standoffs. This frame is plenty clear, but like uh, like the Martian frames or the um, the aliens, sometimes the 5.1 inch prop will actually contact the uh, standoffs. So this one, this one's fine and it flies pretty good on these. Be right back. Uh, carbon power props, would that help near the volcano, right? <laughs> oh man. Uh, when building, do you set up the XT60 wires typically via the tail or the side like Mr. Steel? Um, it depends. I haven't had a ton of luck going out the side. Um, I typically like to go out the back with, uh, with the pigtail. Um, it kind of depends on the packs you're running and how long your pigtail is. If you have a st stupid short one, uh, I'll we'll go out the side. That way you can kind of wrap the the pigtail with the lipo strap against the battery to kind of hold it in there. Uh, for me, I typically take the battery and I run the um, the leads out of the battery forward and then go back with them. That way the balance plug is back behind like the GoPro and it's not going to get in the props, whereas if it's in the back, it can get in the props. Um, and then I go in the back with it, plug it in, and I use a lipo strap over the connector to kind of hold it in place. Oh, we're so freaking bored in this hotel, man. Uh, this stream is making me more upset than I didn't have time to pack more like clothes and toys for Skylar. Sorry, man. Uh, that sucks. Tell us they're going to a hotel to quarantine and we'd be getting picked up in a couple days. When the cab calls. It's 30 minutes ETA. I couldn't pack my iMac or drone stuff. Man, I, I just want this stuff to be over. This is getting annoying. Oh, Taxachusetts. Uh, when testing possible prop contact with standoffs, remember to flex the entire arm up as you test. Yeah, that too. Um, your arm shouldn't flex all that much, but on thinner frames, uh, you could actually experience quite a bit of arm flex. Yeah. Yeah, I'm kind of tired of all this crap going on in the world. It's getting old. Like, really, really stinking old. Um, anyways, uh, we're kind of winding down here towards the end of the live stream. If uh, if you want to get in on the uh, Super Chat giveaway for the motors, uh, $5 Super Chat set of Racer Star Sick 2207. 1888 KV. These are probably the best motors uh, I've ever seen come out of, uh, well, Racer Star. These are a very premium ish motor. Not the latest motor in the world, but uh, durable for sure. See how much these guys weigh. Oh, uh, too much coffee. Did 
37 grams. Well, like 38 a piece with prop nut. So uh, they're not the lightest in the world. They're not the heaviest either. But these do have that uh, that little rubber O-ring in the bottom of them for kind of like what um, iFlight started doing. Yeah, see they use that little rubber, little rubber preloading O-ring inside of here. That was a shim there. You can kind of see it maybe. Little green O-ring. That uh, that's something that I see pretty much standard in just about every motor that's coming out now is that type of uh, attachment hardware um, for the ones with the screws. And what that makes it so you can just you can just crank these sucker down these suckers down and. Uh, you don't have to worry about binding up at all. Whereas without that O-ring, you got to like kind of back them off. Otherwise, um, they kind of start binding up. You'll feel the bell be real hard to turn. Big Sin. Tweet, how you doing, man? Doing great, man. How are you? Hopefully you're getting a chance to get out and fly. Do something fun outside. Weather's kind of getting nicer here. Hopefully it's getting nice where you're at. Yeah, Rob Logan, man. Hang in there. It'll be over soon. Um, go back to life as normal. Just got to stay strong. Ah, it starts. Stay strong. There you go. Uh, Mike Bergman what motor is that? Uh, it is the Racer Star Sick 2207 18 88 KV 6S. Big sin. Michigan weather starting to get nice here. Uh, yeah, I used to live in Michigan before I moved to southern Alabama. I I miss it, miss it immensely. Um, I honestly miss the miss the winter time. Um, something peaceful about uh, the snow and the cold. Just, I, I guess I'm one of the weird ones. But after living here, I do appreciate why there are so many snowbirds in Michigan that decided to uh, book it south for the winter time. Uh, I think that's that that's the ideal way to live. Live up there, spring, summer, and fall, and then beat feet in the winter time. The fish looks really good on those Racer Star motors. Yeah, they are they are really well done motors. Uh, curved magnets and everything. The air gap it's a little bit bigger than uh, like a premium motor, and the windings aren't you know the best. But um, it's not a premium motor. It's a it's a high value motor. Um, the bell's a little chonky, but uh, I really like these. These things had a, a ton of punch to them. I wouldn't give up Michigan winters, man. Maybe a vacation for one, but uh, I love the snow. Yeah, I, li I like the winter times. Uh, I, it, the winter times sure beat the uh, the sweltering, ungodly uh, southern Alabama heat in the summertime. Oh, oh, by the way, super hot, super humid. Here's some gnats. <sighs> That's what they do. That's what happens here. Oh, oh, and then hurricanes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there's a lot of negatives to the uh, to the mild winters here. Uh, let's see, uh, Eric Allen, when using 2450 KV on 6S, what KV am I aiming for on 6S? Uh, I usually go for a little bit higher than normal KV. Um, I shoot for like the 18 and 19, uh, 100 KV mo uh, range. But if you're going to scale those down, start off with like 70% motor scaling. And then if the motors are getting hot, you don't notice, uh, abnormally large amp draw and you want a little more oomph out of them, uh, go ahead and bump it up a little bit. But 70% is a good place to start. Um, at least that's what I've been doing before. Uh, I have done the motor scaling. It works, but it's a software fix. It, the motors are, the, it, it's still hard on the ESCs because the ESCs are taking a very large inrunch of current because a high KV motor has less resistance, which creates more current. 
uh, for the times where it does spool up, it's still a lot of inrush current for the ESC. So um, it does kind of contribute to um, more dead ESCs than running the proper KV motor. But I would say if you're if you're going to be 6S from now on, I would buy 6S appropriate motors, maybe a little bit high side, like 1900 uh, KV for 6S and just run those. And if you feel like you need to scale them down, then do that. But starting with like a 2700 KV motor, um, it's pretty hard on ESCs, but it's definitely it's definitely doable. Uh, chonky bells take a beating. Yes, they certainly do. Rob Logan sent a Google Photos link. <laughs> awesome, man. Uh, I'm just assuming if you send me a link, you want me to show it on the live stream, but yep, there's uh, that's a good way to make sure you don't get anything. Um, doesn't help anybody else around you though. But uh, <laughs> that's awesome. Uh, don't forget your tornadoes. Yep, okay, tornadoes. Tornadoes scare the shit out of me because they just come up and kill everybody. Uh, hurricanes, you get plenty of warning. Um, I haven't been through too many bad hurricanes here. Been through a lot of them, but nothing, nothing crazy since I've been down here. <laughs> Private Island, seven pal strokes from Michigan to the north. I got you. Uh, growing up, spent plenty of time in uh, Kanukistan. Uh, Stefan Morris, welcome. I don't think I've seen your name before. Uh, I'm building my first drone with a NASA V2 and a F4, F450 frame. But uh, such a newbie, I, I need to take to hobby stores to learn how to properly install the prop. Uh, they all screw on the same was so I think that's the issue. Um, yeah, you got to make sure you got your props turning the right direction. You got to make sure you got the props on the right direction. You got to make sure your software knows which way your motors are turning or your motors are turning the way the flight controller thinks they're supposed to turn. Um, there is a lot in there. there. There's a lot of different things. Uh, check out my, uh, my build videos. I do a lot, like it's a little bit higher level, but I definitely step it back to kind of give a little bit of background and basics behind how to set things up. Um, check this out. Joshua Bardwell is another wealth of knowledge for, uh, building. Uh, I don't think anybody really covers the NASA V2. Maybe, um, Curry Kitten would be, uh, someone who has videos on the NASA V2 or, um, Project Blue Falcon. Uh, he's probably one too. Uh, let's see. I was in Sarnia and I'd actually go to Michigan while uh, in the river. <laughs> Aim for 1300 and raise as needed. Yeah, that'll work. I have a set of T-Motor 1950s. Yeah, I'd run those on uh, 6S just straight up. Just, uh, you know... Check, make sure things aren't getting too hot and have your current meter in your OSD and kind of keep an eye out. Remember your current meter in your OSD, unless you have very specific ESCs, which if you have them, you probably bought them for that reason. That current meter in your OSD is the combined total of all the current going through your uh, your system. So if you have a, a ESC rating of 40 amps, that is 40 for each motor. So, so that's 160 amps total is kind of what you would see if you were maxing out your ESCs. So it's pretty hard to max out an ESC nowadays. The burst ratings are really high, uh, but just remember that if you see uh, 60 amps in your OSD and you have 40 amp ESCs, you're fine, most likely. That's 40 amps total, is or 60 amps total is what's being drawn. Still exhaling my own particles, yep. Uh, former Buckeye here in Atlanta. Oh, do not miss Ohio winners. Yeah, Ohio, what their chief exports are what, poverty and rust? That's a joke. Uh, I spent plenty of time in Ohio as well. Uh, nothing beats Cedar Point. Holy crap, a DJI flame wheel. Uh, yeah, did, I don't know if anybody saw uh, a post Bardwell put on Facebook where it was a guy looking for a way to uh, build a quad that will fly in off limits areas and carry a 440 gram payload and be able to drop it. <laughs> yeah, someone's dropping contraband into a prison.
Mark Lee just wants to say hello. Still love my Tango 2 grips. Awesome, man. I'm glad you do. Uh, Stephen Morris is a lot. He's right, but uh, your own threads on your motors are all the same, regardless of prop direction. Uh, some are, some older motors did have reverse uh, threads for the revert, for the counter rotating props. So uh, you don't see that very much anymore. Older motors, which I'm guessing because of all the old uh, gear you're using, you probably have old motors. Some thread left, some thread right. Um, but honestly, it really doesn't matter which way they're spinning. Yeah. But yeah, as Private Allen says, two spin clockwise and two counterclockwise. King's Island, yep. All right, folks, uh, it is noon plus some. Let's go ahead and spin the wheel for the Super Chat giveaway. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten entries. Ten entries. Oh, I could probably just read it up here. I'm an idiot. Uh, if you want to get on the Super Chat giveaway, it's five buckaroonies. Hit the little dollar sign down there at the bottom. Get yourself on the wheel. Win yourself a set of motors. And, uh, you know, I'll throw in a set of radio grips as well. Just to kind of sweeten the pot. Mike Bergman, hi. I think I seriously answered, uh, answered that guy. I thought it was a troll, so I gave him honest advice thinking it was a joke. Uh, I guess I made someone stay in the clink. <laughs> Probably. Uh, yeah, I've had I've had people contact me that eh, things seem kind of sketchy because they're asking how to build real old gear and they're in a part of the world where uh, I don't know um, if a lot of companies sell to those parts of the world. There we go. Here's another video or another picture. <laughs> oh, that's cool. Oh, that is cool. Yeah, I spent a really good day with uh, with just me and the daughter yesterday. Went out to the beach, did some one wheeling, um, went to a park. She got all sandy as hell at the beach. Had a really good day, um, real good day. All right, folks, so we're going to shut this thing down here in just a minute. And we'll go ahead and spin it. Somebody give me a number uh, between 10 and uh, 60. Yep, yep, I'll shuffle it. Nice for sure. 47, uh, RD2, RDH Larry. Uh, 47. There we go, 47. Yep, Larry Beach to it. Let's shuffle. Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 10. There we go. Shuffled up real good, and we're going to spin the sucker right now. Thank you, everybody who uh, participated. Hopefully, everybody's name's on there. Make sure your name's on there. You guys. Make sure it's on there. All right, five, four, three, two, one, and good luck. I hope you guys like the Super Chat giveaways. I definitely like doing these um, rather than trying to just sell this stuff outright. This is a good way to bring a little bit back into the channel and uh, get you guys a good deal on some gear. Oh, stop, 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 stop. <laughs> Rob Logan, man, I'm rooting for you, buddy, but uh, it is just not your not your luck, man. One of these days, one of these days you'll get it. Eric Allen, congratulations, my friend. You are the winner of four new motors. Congratulations. Um, I'll bring them with me to the field instead of trying to mail them to you. That works out great for me. So close, man. So close. So close. There you go, buddy. Got yourself a set of motors. Congratulations. <laughs> I have enough motors anyways. Uh, yeah, uh, next week, uh, I got, I got something lined up really good for next week, so. Um. 
definitely make sure you catch the uh, the live stream for that one. And then uh, Eric, if you if you want a set of grips as well, uh, hit me up. Let me know what you want, and I'll uh, I'll just bring it to you. Uh, bring it to you to the field instead of having to try to mail these things. Unless you really want me to, then I can do that too. Uh, let's see. Steve Morris, he has to spend about 1500 bucks about the stuff to buy two drones, radio, uh, around 2015. I uh, just built the F450, new to this, and yes, it's old. Hey man, old gear works, uh, works okay. Uh, there have been a ton of advances since 2015, but um, all the principles of flight are the same. Speedy Turtle, welcome, buddy. We're about to wrap this thing up. Great timing, as always. <laughs> uh, Sunny, or uh, Sub Bunny, uh, are those grips made from skateboard, uh, from skateboard grip tape? Yes, they are. Yes, they are. But you made it. That's all that matters. You made it, man. Uh, Eric won a set of uh, 2207 1888 KV motors from Racer Star. These are the sick motors. Uh, I've probably got maybe five flights on these. Uh, I was I was scared to fly that stupid uh, uh, that Exorcist. I just I knew I was gonna push it and I was gonna break that frame and I didn't want to. It was it was just too pretty. Um, so it just hung on the wall for about a year and uh, eventually I was just like, you know what, I need to fund some other projects. So broomed it out, Got someone got a sweet deal on it and hopefully he's loving it now. Yep, 6S now, like it should be, 6S. All right. Well, all right, I think I'm gonna finish this thing up here uh, I've got a let's see I've got a uh, hundred and twenty grips I gotta cut tonight and then I got another order for about 80 I gotta try cutting by the end of next week so spend a lot of time uh, slaving over a hot laser cutter on the garage uh, trying to get that out as soon as I can so we're gonna go ahead and clean this thing up thank you all for coming out and uh, participating and joining the live stream if you haven't hit that like button please do hit that subscribe button which I'm not sure if you would be here if you weren't a subscriber I don't know how that algorithm and YouTube analytics bullshit works out but uh, you know try to hook me up uh, head over to tweetfb.com if you have any questions uh, if you have any you need some troubleshooting help with the uh, <clears throat> first guy. Uh, head on over there. I got a ton of people, including myself, that really are good at helping uh, you all out with your problems. Uh, Stephen Morris, uh, definitely head over to my Discord. Check out tweetfb.com. Head over to my Discord, and uh, there are plenty of people there, including myself, that will be more than happy to help uh, set you up and get you going straight, getting your stuff in the air. Uh, YouTube uh, chat, the, the, the chat box is just an awful way to troubleshoot. Uh, here's what happens on my end is after about seven back and forth, I stop seeing any updates for you. You could keep chatting. I'll never get an update. It's just a problem with the system. I don't know why. Discord is the way to go. Uh, also, if you want to join my Patreon up there, uh, there's a link to do that where you can get in on... Uh, Upcoming giveaways, stay tuned for this guy. You're gonna be pissed if you miss it. Or at least I know I would be. Uh, biggest giveaway to date will be that one. All right, folks, thanks for stopping by and I will see you next time. This is Tweet FPV and keep on flying. <laughs>